Identity, like so many aspects of security, has a life cycle. Um, and all very much based on the, the project management life cycle. Um, but, uh, you know, we have, we have a cycle to go through. It's uh, perhaps not as uh, cyclic as um, some of the other cycles that we have, such as uh, software development and the ongoing uh, uh, upgrades and, and uh, adjustments uh, that are in there. But uh, a cycle nonetheless. And, of course, the uh, beginning of this is the the initial setup, um, the, uh, well, the determination of the identity to begin with, the, the verification of the identity, and uh, this, this can be fairly simple, uh, you know, we get a letter from human resources and we set up simple access, but again, you know, compartmentalized security, if this person has a um, uh, more sensitive position, a, a position requiring uh, access to more sensitive information, um, a position that is going to make more sensitive decisions. Um, well, uh, in the first place, human resources should have done additional uh, uh, verification of, of this person, uh, you know, all the uh, background checks uh, that should go into that. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we may need to do a little bit more in terms of our own uh, uh, identification and authentication of this particular user and, and require possibly uh, greater authentication when this person asserts their identity for access to the system. So, um, you know, the, the initial setup, that, you know, is a, an easy thing to say, and yet um, we may have uh, a number of factors uh, that require additional work um, and additional support for that, depending on the actual identity, the, the requirements of that identity, the, uh, permissions that we give them. Um, now, uh, again, uh, the second uh, factor is, is uh, change and, and maintenance, particularly as someone in our organization may uh, change jobs, um, get promoted uh, to different levels of responsibility. And in that regard, um, they will have uh, additional uh, permissions that they require for uh, what they are doing for us, what their uh, jobs require, what their permission requires. And so we have to ensure that their identity has additional authorization. We're going to be needing to... Uh, uh, make that available to them. We are also, we should be, um, verifying that as well. Um, do, you know, have we hired somebody who has been a very good employee and because they have been a very good employee, we have promoted them to an elevated position of great responsibility, but the background checks that they got when they first came into the company don't really support that, you know. So we may have to go back to HR sometimes and uh, perform additional checks uh, so that, you know, somebody just doesn't, doesn't just move up the ranks and, and, you know, we find out we've had somebody who's actually an employee of our competitors or, you know, an unfriendly nation, depending, um, uh, in our top ranks. So um, what do we have to do? In that regard, um, when when there's change um, in the identification in the permissions of the accounts, uh, you know, verifying that 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 change um, is uh, validated, is uh, supported. So, uh, 
we've got our initial setup, we've got our change in our maintenance, and then there's teardown. Um, what do we do when our employee leaves our employment? Um, and ag again, the uh, the levels, you know, I mean, you know, we're going to have to do some, uh, take some care with regard to uh, ensuring that we have code their credentials, that, the, you know, they are no longer authorized, that that identity is no longer authorized to uh, uh, access the materials which they formerly had access because they are uh, no longer an employee in our company. And uh, we have to ensure that that is done so that we don't have uh, problems later on. Um, interestingly, this, this can get uh, problematic in and of itself. Um, I can remember one uh, situation where uh, a bunch of people um, in a technical department with uh, access to a lot of uh, the resources of the company um, were uh, all fired. That, that office was... Uh, terminated basically and and so nine employees uh were done and and the the links the company went to to uh well you know basically they weren't given any advance warning uh the security people marched into their offices marched them all out didn't even let them get their own jackets and then you know subsequently they had to make uh special arrangements to get appointments to come back into the building escorted by security and some level of management to retrieve their own personal possessions. I mean, you know, this is way, way over the top. Now, same company, I happen to be working there, um, and uh, when I left the company, uh, they were uh, possibly because of the... Uh, uh, backlash that they got over that uh, uh, more cavalier and uh, uh, one of the technical people came bustling into my cubicle and, and uh, told me to bring up the change password account and, and uh, to uh, you know start the password change and of course I have to type in my, my password and then she shoots me away from the keyboard and she types in a new password and so um, you know now I no longer have access to the uh, uh, to the system. Unfortunately, uh, while this all happened on the uh, terminal uh, that the company and, and that this technical person was familiar with, she didn't realize that I had a microcomputer on the desk which had in fact two terminal sessions running on this uh, you know, on their systems, uh, already signed in and and accessible. And I, <laughs> I must admit, I did um, think about uh, uh, sending an email uh, to people from their system uh, after the time that I had been supposedly logged off the system. And... Uh, uh, well, I decided not to, uh, but, uh, you know, you, you do have to think about all the different types of access that are possible and, and ensure that you have dealt with them properly and appropriately.